we start a part G of module 4, merge sort part 2. Because uh, right now it is very close to our midterm test. So I want to spend some class time on problems, questions, you know, helping you prepare for the midterm test. So that's why the original one class I split into two classes. The first part I do some, you know, question reviews. The second part still our new material. So for this class, we will have three videos. The first one, we do homework questions review, uh, part two, second part. Then we have two videos to complete the second part of merge sort. All right, G.1 results on some questions from homework one part two yeah last time we complete yeah question number 16 yeah as i remember question number 16 yeah all right so our first question of the second part part question number 17. Yeah. for this question first the missing rate 17%. Yeah. 17 percent. 17% of you miss this one. Not very high, yeah. but I want to explain a little bit. So those students who missed this one, there is some common problem among those students. Yeah. Because in one of the videos, I gave some hint. Yeah. So most students follow the hint, so you can give the correct answer. But for small number of students, they just use some special formula. Yeah. So the most frequently formula they used, log base 2 of 25. All right, this number. So I didn't give them any point of this one. Yeah. The reason is this. Yeah. Although this answer, if you want to look at the approximation, you know, you can argue it is a close answer, right? Yeah, but here it's not that. Yeah, because the formula is wrong. Yeah, the reason is the formula is wrong. The concept is wrong. Yeah, so why is that? When I ask you the average case performance or efficiency and for some concrete problem, it's not a general concrete, 25 elements. Usually, when I give you a specific number, okay, so not a general M, usually when I give you that, I ask you for precise answer. Yeah, the, yeah, the answer should be precise, okay, or the formula expression should be precise one. Yeah. But when you do calculation, you can use approximation, but the formula you should use precise, yeah. It's not M. When I give you M, you know, so then you can use approximation. But when I use, give you a specific number, then use precise expression. All right? Yeah. In calculation, you can use approximation, right? Yeah. But expression. Yes, I ask you for precise expression. Yeah. But here, this is not precise one. Okay? Yeah. And this actually approximation for the worst case. Approximation for the worst case. Not for average case. Average case for the binary search, approximately the worst case minus one. Approximately minus one. But here is approximately, but we need a precise way. So that's why we need to draw that binary tree. So remember in my video, you need to draw the binary tree, look at different levels, right? 
So later you write a formula like this. Okay, later you write a formula like this. This is the correct answer. Okay, yeah. I hope you understand this. I do not want to go through the whole procedure because in one of my previous video. So yeah, so you you, you can find it. No, if you really want to get the whole procedure, you can find it. Okay. All right, but here I want to point another thing yeah, for our midterm test related to our midterm test. Yeah. Remember, as I said before, the midterm test, all the questions basically derived from homework questions, comprehension questions, quiz questions, these three sources three main sources right yeah so let me give you some estimate all right yeah 80 percent will come from the three sources okay homework one cq cq you know several right so i need to list all those and uh quiz qz okay QZ one, two, three, right? Yeah. Eighty percent will questions will be derived from those questions. Yeah. But how about remaining twenty percent? Remaining twenty percent. So I try to oh what's that? Hmm? Hmm? All right. All right, the remaining 20%. All right, so I, I try to create some new questions, relatively new. Yeah. Although the knowledge part, the older knowledge, but I try to test your creativity. So if you can apply our knowledge to solve some relatively new but related problems. So that's something I like to do in the that 20%. Yeah. But I will control not to make it too hard. Yeah. All right. So for that consideration, here let me explain how do I derive a midterm question, yeah, midterm question from this question. I just give you some idea. Okay? I just give you some idea. Yeah. How do I? I remember in the homework review questions part one, I give you some example. Yeah. Here, let me use this question to give you another example. All right. Look at here, 25, right? Can I change to a different number? Right? I can change to a different number. All right. But when I change, I use the same way as I did in homework part one, homework review part one. If you can still remember, yeah. Rem yeah. I want to change this to a big number. How about that? Relatively big. Okay? Not huge. Relatively big number. Okay, yeah, for example, I can give you an example, yeah, for example, n equals 500, how about that, 500, okay, relatively big number, because if I give you 500, you cannot draw a binary tree with 500 nodes, right, nobody, you, you cannot draw it, yeah, I mean, yeah, you will get lost, okay, 500, nodes binary tree okay you will get lost yeah so here i want to you know we need to find a rule for this question so we do not need to draw that binary tree that big binary tree so that's not efficient we don't need okay all right but without drawing that binary tree how do we solve question solve, solve the problem 
Here, try to find the row. So 25 nodes, all right. One, level one, yeah, so, all right. The first one, level zero, okay, let's see. level zero, root, one comparison, okay. One comparison, the number of nodes, two to the zero, okay. Two comparison, you know, next level, yeah, two to the first, all right. Okay, yeah. Two square, two third. All right, okay. Before the last one, because the last level, last level usually it's not a power of two. Other than that, all power of two. Okay, all right. So you add up all these numbers two to the zero plus two to the first. You add up, yeah, let me use two to the k minus one. Okay, equals two to the k minus one all right look at that all right that number less than or equal to 500 right remember we use n equals to n equals this 500 okay all right still similar to the example in part one what is the largest power of two minus one that is less or equal to 500 what is that number okay can you get that? Eight, right? Is it two? Because two to the ninth, that will be 512. Minus one, 511, that will be greater than well, 500. So two to the eighth minus one, that is the largest power of two minus one form that is less than or equal to 500. All right. So you know that number, 255, right? 255, okay? All right, so now you know all these nodes before the last level, you have 255. How many nodes, how many nodes in the last level? 500 minus 255, what's that number? 245, right? Yeah. So you know, the number of elements at the bottom level. Yeah. With that, now, to find the average new denominator 500, 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 2 square dot 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 you know uh yeah because we have 7 right yeah 7 yeah 7 or 8 8 times 2 to the 7th right Look at that. Oh, yeah. Because look at this. This is k, right? k equals 8. k minus 1 equals 7, right? Yeah. And the coefficient is one more than exponent, right? So 8 times 2 to the 7th. 8 times 2 to the 7th. Plus 9 times how many? 245, right? That's the formula, okay? Although it is a little long, but you can write the correct formula explicitly. That's the correct formula, okay? If you want to calculate it, it's okay. If you do not calculate, just leave the formula, it is fine. No. Because we can use calculator, right? We can use calculator or another uh, online tool I like to recommend you, Warframe Alpha. Warframe Alpha. Yeah, my spelling may not be correct, okay? but you know, approximately that. Yeah, you know, this part 
I don't know if it's correct or not. Warframe Alpha. That, you know, online computation tool, very famous. Yeah. So I recommend this tool. So you can use this to calculate this big expression. Yeah. But not necessary. If you leave that big formula, it is okay. I won't take any point off because the formula is correct. Okay. I know you can find the answer if you need to do it. Yeah. All right. So that is the comments for this question. So I hope you can handle it. Okay? If I give you a similar question in the midterm, I hope you can use this video. You can find the answer. Yeah. Some of the students, uh, I can feel they watched all the videos. So they did really well. Yeah. So they didn't miss much. Yeah. Only missed a little bit. Yeah. So that's normal. Yeah. But the, they got the whole ideas. They understand the whole procedures. Yeah. All right. So next question. Number 18. This is a very easy question, but quite some students miss that. 30%. That's not very low. I do not treat this percentage as a low missing rate number. I treat as the, you know, mid, mid level missing number, mid, uh, mid level, yeah. yeah, not very high, not very low, middle level, yeah. Answer is three. Some students even give me several, actually, that number is not based on my impression, yeah. Some of the statistic detail, so I cannot do too much on statistics. Yeah, I just based on my impression. Yeah. Some of the students, they give me some formula for this case. Actually, that that's not quite right. We use the same criteria we used it before. This is a, n is a concrete number, n equals three. In this case, don't give me any approximation formula. So like log base two, you know, three, you know, whatever. So I, I don't know. I mean, they just give me some, you know, things like that. You know, we don't have formulas like that. Yeah. I want you to just work it out. Okay. Three element array. Why you just do comparisons on the paper? Yeah, to get answer, right? The median. For the median, I didn't ask you best case, worst case, then you should do for the worst case. You should do for the worst case. Some students give me both worst case and the best case. Yeah, it's fine. But I only look at your worst case. The reason is if you can solve for the worst case, then you can use that at the most, that number of comparisons to solve the whole problem. So that's the reason. So we target the worst case. Yeah. All right. So for that case, try to find the median, minimum number of comparisons for the worst case. All right. First comparison, x1, x2. After that, one smaller, one larger one. So you can assume, yeah, so many students understand that step okay you can assume yeah, certain order yeah, you can assume that okay no problem yeah after that x3 you can compare with either one right yeah so if you compare with x1 there are two cases this time you cannot assume if you assume you may lose some important information. So this time you cannot assume. Okay? So you need to consider two cases. The first case, x3 less than x1. Yeah. Here we mean top we mean less. Okay. Bottom we mean greater. Okay. If we use this way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then the first case, yeah, we have two cases. The first case, x3 less than x1 less than 
x2, then the median, we know median, this is the median, but this is the best case, two comparisons. We don't need that, okay? We don't need that. What we need is the worst case. Worst case, x3 less than x1. Oh, x3 greater than x1. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, x1, x2, x3. Okay, yeah. In that case, you need one more comparison to get a median. Okay, so this case, three comparisons for median. Okay, three comparisons for median. Yeah. The less one of the the less one in this comparison will be the median. Yeah. So we can say that. Yeah. But here, since I only ask you for answer, you do not need to give me the detail. Okay? On your scratch paper, you do these things on your scratch paper. I only need to give you the answer. But if you see proof, you need to give me the detail. Okay? If you see solution, You need to give me the detail. Okay? Yeah. Some students, small number of students. For the proof, they skip. Okay? Skip. For the solution, they just give me one answer. Even your answer is correct. Okay? Even your answer is correct. Four points. I only give you one point. Okay? One point for your correct answer. Three points for the details. Okay, yeah. So you will lose three points. Seventy-five percent, you will lose for this particular question. Yeah. You know, try your best to provide the whole procedure of the solution. Yeah. All right. So that's number eighteen. The next question, number twenty. So this question, there is some common problem I want to discuss. Missing rate. 13%, not very high, but those students who missed this one, several, they use a wrong formula, wrong formula. If you use the correct one, you won't have any problem, but they use the wrong formula. So that wrong formula is very strange. Okay? We derive the formula in our notes, yeah. but when they copy the formula, they got it wrong. Okay. All right, correct formula. Suppose this is the n number, number of elements. The correct formula, 1 half n times n minus 1, or some students like to use n squared minus n. Okay. Both fine. Both, you know, similarly, you know, regarding this similarity, uh, you know, regarding the complexity, similar. All right, but it's so strange when they copy the formula, they put this parenthesis at a denominator. Several students, they did this. They did this way. Then, completely wrong. Okay? Number of comparisons. Here we are, we're asking number of comparisons how can you give me a a fraction so 1 over 84 do you think that's a reasonable number 1 84th comparisons do you think that's a reasonable number for the worst case sorting because this number less than one sorting seven element array after you get an answer you need to think about if this answer makes sense or not. The answer could be ridiculous, right? The answer could be ridiculous. So this one is ridiculous. Less than one is a fraction. A fraction of comparison. Yeah, reason run formula. Several students did in that way. Yeah. Right. All right, that's number 20. Number 21, this one, we did. 
when I also, so I gave you a hint on this one. Yeah. 17 17 percent missed this one. Okay. Not not very high, yeah, but I hope those students who missed this question, they watched my hint in one of the videos. Yeah. Alright, because this is very simple, so here I just explain quickly. After we did insertion sort, then I give you a question like this. In the insertion sort, I also talk about this question. We did it. Yeah, two places. We did it. Okay. So one is we use insertions. Uh, first, we sort these three element array using three comparisons. After that, we get x1 less than x2 less than x3. Assumption. Yeah, let, let us assume this is assumption. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a reasonable assumption. So it is fine. It's a reasonable assumption. Okay. Without loss of generality. So that's okay. All right. Then the last node or element, we, we do the insertion operation. When we do insertion, we use the binary search way insertion. Compare with the middle, first one, then one of the two, second one, or another one. Yeah, because similar. So you need a two more. Okay? So three plus two equals five. Okay? All right. Some students gave me, you know, a big number, very big number. Yeah. You know, insertion. Yeah, actually they do insertion. Uh, four element based insertion. Yeah, adding together, worst case, right? So they're giving me a relatively big number. So that's not right. Yeah. All right, so here, but that's five. Remember, this condition is given. X le one less than X2 is given. That means we can save one comparison here. Okay? Save one comparison. So you can think about, without this condition, you need one comparison to get this information, right? But now this information is given, okay? It is compared by someone else, you just use that information and continue the remaining part. So you can save one, so your answer is 5 minus 1 equals 4. Then you get a correct answer. But for this question, I also, I saw one student give a really good solution. So I like that solution a lot. So here, I recommend that. So that student gave a new view to solve this problem, new view. Usually, a new solution corresponds to or comes from a new view. So you view this question in a different way. Then you solve it in a different way. So that's a really nice view here I want to introduce. All right, so what is the view? Because this order already given, so we can treat x1, x2 as an ordered array, right? Ordered array with two elements. See, two elements, x1, x2 ordered array with two elements. All right, next we treat, we have two elements we want to insert into an ordered array. We are familiar with this operation, this insertion operation, right? Yeah. X3, when we do insertion, the worst case, worst case, two comparisons, right? Now X3, we need two comparisons to do the insertion. Okay, yeah. So let's assume we insert x3 here, okay, after two comparisons. Then x4, this time we do the binary way insertion, another two, okay, another two comparisons. So x4, we can insert it into this sorted array. 
So the answer, 2 plus 2 equals 4 comparisons. How about that? This solution is very good. I like it a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but the important thing is, I introduced this new view to you. All right, so now, another important thing I want to let you know, midterm, midterm question, okay? Midterm question. For this question, I want to modify it to make a midterm question to you. Okay, so when I do it, I like to take this view. Here, I do not give you the detail. I just let you know because I like this idea so much. So I want to create a new question using this idea, this view. So you need to really understand this new solution. Then you can solve one of relatively hard questions in the midterm. Okay. All right, so that's it for this question. Yeah, we have a few more. Yeah, we will finish it quickly. Yeah. Show this one. All right. Many students, the common problem I saw, missing rate so high. Oh, nearly 40%. Pretty high. Yeah. Okay. We we had an example in the notes. Yeah. So many students use that example. Yeah. All right. The solution I give you like this. Right. All right. In the solution in the notes, I emphasize you need to give me the lower bound, upper bound, C1, C2. Remember? Lower bound, upper bound, and N0, right? Yeah. Those three numbers you need to give me. Yeah. All right. Many students, they only give me the lower bound. Okay? They only give me the lower bound. So then they told me, uh, they prove it. It's not. Okay? Because lower bound, relatively easy, because you can see it easily, right? Yeah. So lower bound, lower, I only give one point. Higher bound, much harder than lower bound, right? How about you need to do a little more? Okay? I give three points. Yeah. So it's not a two two point two two split. Because the difficulty, their difficulty is not different. Difficulty levels different. So I do this split. Yeah. Fair split. So I treat as a fair split. So one for lower bound, three for higher bound. Alright. And here in my solution, yeah, because we do not need we do not need to point C1, C2, and 0 explicitly. But in your solution, you can give me that information, that's enough. Yeah. Here that is N0 information. Okay? If I see N greater or equal to 5, I know you use this as N0. Okay? So you're fine here. Then when I see here coefficient 1, coefficient 16. So I know what it, which one, one is C1, one is C2. So that's fine. You do not need to explicitly tell me C1 equals C1, C2 equals, okay? So you can save the, the step a little bit. Yeah. So you can, in that way, you can write your proof, you know, as simple as possible. So you provide me all the important pieces of information, but at, at the same time, make it as simple as possible okay so that's why so you can save something yeah so that's my comment yeah, for this question yeah all right next one this one i already i i gave the hint in my hint in the video i think i give about 80 percent of the solution 80% of the solution in that video. So not 100%, you still need to do a little bit, but 80%, yeah. But 22% of you still miss this one, okay? At least you can get a lot of partial credit, 80%. Okay? 
so you can get a lot of partial credit yeah 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 so i do not want to repeat yeah because also in my answer answer i'll give you the whole detail steps in my answer so i do not repeat here okay yeah the last question question number 25 five element array 48 percent missed that 48 percent about one half yeah uh most students so they did part of it yeah some of them only give me the answer yeah but some students give me some partial solution and some some problem small problem yeah here i want to make comments at one place so when you solve questions like this yeah all right some students did in this way x1 x2 comparison all right so you can assume x1 smaller right. smaller here we treat as the winner okay yeah then x3 x4 comparison we can assume x3 is the winner okay yeah that assumption has no problem we can assume that no. and x1 x3 comparison you can assume x1 is the winner the smaller okay all right after that we can write the relationship diagram in this way x1 less than x3 less than x4 but at the same time x2 less than x1 okay the diagram like this yeah all right now next step you should be very careful yeah yeah all right some students did in this way yeah. so here i want to talk about the, the place that many of you got it wrong yeah one place all right so when we compare x1 and x2 they they wrote in this way if x1 less than x2 you just write x1 less than x2 okay if not x2 less than x1 swap x1 and x2 after swap you still you maintain x1 less than x2 right yeah it's fine yeah for me so that step no problem but sometimes you cannot use that swap okay sometimes you cannot use that swap for example x5 all right because after that we have x5 all right that student compare x3 and x5 then they use that swap argument another time this time it is wrong okay all right so they assume x3 less than x5 yeah otherwise swap okay otherwise swap then the swap is wrong okay how can you, can you how can you swap because if it is swap a lot of other elements will get impact a lot of other elements will you will impact on other elements all right so let me tell you the rule you can use swap the basic rule using the swap argument okay argument okay that rule is no impact on other elements the impact here means you <laughs> how to describe you messed up the relationship right so when you do swap you know the relationship got messed up okay the reason you cannot do swap think about this do 
Do you know the relationship between x1 and x5? You don't know. So when you do swap, do you still put x5 below x1? If you put x5 below x1, that could be wrong. Because x5 could be above x1. You didn't consider that possible case. So that's why I say if you do if you do that swap operation in the wrong situation, you get whole thing wrong. You how do I say that? You corrupt your data. So you make your data corrupted. Okay? Yeah. Completely messed up. Yeah. So you should be very careful in this situation, right? The impact or not. Hope you can check the impact for other elements. Relationship impact. Yeah. What kind of impact? Relationship. Smaller, greater, that kind of relationship impact. Yeah. So that's very important. Yeah. If no relation, special relation impact, so then you can do that. Yeah. For example, here, yeah, before I finish this video, so let me just uh, give you one situation that you can do swap. Yeah, I saw one student, you know, they do the right swap. So that's fine. Yeah. For example, x5 with x2 to do swap. But before, before that student did this step, that student did some preparation. If you, if you do not do that preparation, it's still wrong, okay? But that student did a very careful preparation to make it correct. So what's that? All right, before that, okay? Before you do this, all right? Yeah. He argued, he or she argued, this x1 cannot be the median. Cannot be the median. So why? Because with this information, x1 greater x1 is less than three elements already. So it cannot be the median, right? Yeah. It could be the smallest one or second smallest one, but it cannot be the third smallest. The median here means the third smallest. So x1 cannot be the median, so x1 is eliminated. So that student eliminated this x1 from the consideration first. Right? After you eliminate, then you are safe to do that operation. <laughs> x5, x2, right? Because when we eliminate x1, we don't worry about the impact with respect to x1. It is eliminated from the consideration. So we assume it's gone. It, it is not there. So there is no impact concern for x1. So for that reason, then you can do that compare and swap that operation. That's completely correct. Other than that, it could be wrong. Okay? It, it is wrong. Yeah. All right, so that's for the review, uh, part two for the homework, number one. Yeah. Next, I will complete uh, merge sort, part two.